Last year, Nissan put the small sedan segment on notice with a pretty outstanding new Sentra. But this redesigned Hyundai Elantra, it's like a hilariously bold mic drop to end the whole show. Take it from me, folks, this is the best car like this you could buy right now, and it's not even close. I've got to tell you, it's not often that I am so immediately impressed with the way a vehicle goes about its business. The closest thing I can think of in recent memory is the Kia Seltos, and not even that thing hit me this quickly. And it's not like the last version of the Elantra was a bad car by any stretch, but this one just hits different. Yes, I am driving the fully loaded version, so it tops out at about 30 grand before tax. No, that's not especially cheap for a small car, especially since Hyundai discontinued the accent, but it is competitively priced compared to compacts like the Honda Civic and the Toyota Corolla. And besides, that doesn't matter because this definitely doesn't feel like a $30,000 car, and I mean that in a good way. The first thing you're going to notice as soon as you jump in here are these massive digital displays that span about 20 inches combined. And the system is just a spruced up version of the one Hyundai has used for years, but it's still one of the best interfaces on the market. The screen is really responsive, the graphics are crisp and sharp, but best of all, it's just very straightforward to use. But I do have one little sticking point here, and that's if you upgrade to this 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen, you have to plug your phone in to use either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And that's not such a big deal, except both of those connections are wireless if you get the eight inch screen that's standard in all three trims. I know that's not such a big deal, but when you think about it, if you are springing for the best technology, you want the latest stuff, the fact that you have to plug in is a little bit weird. And here's the other thing, there's only one very specific way that you can get the Elantra with both a wireless charger and those wireless connections, and that's the ultimate trim without the upgraded screen. And that means in here, I have to plug my phone in anyway, so that wireless charger is redundant. And then in the other trims, it doesn't matter that they're wireless because I have to plug my phone in if I want to charge them. Again, just a little bit of a sticking point, but those systems do work very well. Anyway, like I said, this is the loaded version, so it's that ultimate trim, but then it is a $2,700 tech pack on top of that. And that's how you get these two screens up here, as well as some other cool stuff like heated rear seats, parking sensors, reverse automatic braking, and Hyundai's highway driving assist system. And really, I do think that qualifies as level two autonomous, but it's basically just a glorified lane keep assist system. It chips in with some help with the steering as long as you have your hands on the wheel, and it does work pretty well. It doesn't try to fight you too hard to do its own thing, though it is a bit strange to feel the steering wheel doing its own thing when you're cruising along. But the good news is if you're not comfortable using it, there is regular lane keep in here, and that comes in every trim, assuming you don't get the base version with the manual transmission. And even in that base trim, you do get some advanced safety features, though I do have another sticking point, and that's the fact that you only get adaptive cruise control in the Ultimate trip. That's a bit of a disappointment, especially because it's standard in both the Honda Civic and the Toyota Corolla, even the cheapest one you can buy with a manual gearbox. Now, if you do spring for this top trim, you get a whole bunch of advanced safety features and they all work very well. They don't interfere too much with what you're doing and they don't panic and hit the brakes suddenly or start beeping and flashing too soon. Because at the end of the day, these are driver aids and it's nice to know that they're not going to get in your way and all they're gonna do is help you out when you're on the road. That's great to see. And another thing that's great is that this has the basics covered. If you look out the front, there are great views. Outward visibility is fantastic because these pillars are so narrow, though the view out the back isn't so great. And a big part of the problem is that high parcel shelf, as well as those three headrests back there and the slope of the window it just makes for a very narrow opening overall. Now that high shelf is part of the wedge-like design this thing has going on, and I really dig this new Elantra styling. If you take a look at that new Sonata, it's a lot more round and I'm not so crazy about it. I do think it looks like a catfish up front, but this thing's a lot more aggressive. It has the same kind of shape to the grill, but it's just a lot more sharp and you have a bunch of creases and body lines that really look the part. And I love the way this trunk lid extends out like this. It makes it look like a built-in spoiler. But you know, going back to that parcel shelf, well, it does give you a deceptively large trunk. And if you take a look back here, I was able to fit our cargo testing pedal car patty without a problem. And that's not something I'm able to do in some larger sedans or even some crossovers. 
Now, I was able to get that pedal car into the back of both the Sentra and the Corolla, so it's not like this thing is especially unique, but it is a nice bonus when you're driving a small sedan to know that there's enough room that you can throw all your stuff in it. And as a point of reference, I wasn't able to get that thing into the back of the Hyundai Venue crossover, which is pretty comparably priced to this thing. But I do have one problem, and that is small item storage in this cabin. There's just not a ton of it, and these door pockets are puny. I can barely fit a sunglasses case in here. I know that seems like a small nitpick, but you do carry stuff around with you, and it's nice to know you have some places to put it all. But passenger room is pretty good overall, though there's not a ton of headroom in the back, and there's definitely not as much as the Corolla, so you might want to think twice before you use this for ride sharing if you want to keep those ratings up. And speaking of ride sharing, there is this weird little space here that you're supposed to be able to stick a suction cup so you can have your phone, and apparently it's made specifically for ride share drivers, but it is a little bit weird, especially because most drivers seem to keep their phones on the right side. Maybe that's just me, but it is something I have noticed. And Otherwise, this is just a dead space that looks very strange. Now, something else that's nice is the fact that you do get heated rear seats if you get this tech pack, though I will say that I do wish there were ventilated seats up here, which is something you can get in the Kia Forte, but these seats are very comfortable and supportive, which is very rare in this compact segment. And I have to say that I do like a lot of the interior styling cues, especially in this one I'm driving. This gray headliner is great, and I do like these fabric inserts on the door panels, but it's not perfect in here, and I do have some complaints and some of them are going to be familiar if you've watched my stuff before. First and foremost, Hyundai's plastics do tend to be a little substandard compared to other brands out there, and you're really going to notice it up here on the dash and on these door panels. And some people have commented on my videos in the past to tell me not to worry about it so much, but I do worry about it because I do think Hyundai can do better. And then some of my other complaints, well, they are subjective, but I am gonna point them out anyways because this is my review. And the first one is the way this driver-centric cabin looks with a two-tone finish in here. I don't hate the fact that you have this handle here separating the driver and the passenger, but what I don't like is the way it looks with two different colors in this cabin. Because if you take a look at these door panels, well, they're gray on the driver's side, but they're black on the passenger side, and it just stands out for all the wrong reasons. Symmetry is a thing in the car design business for a reason, and I really think Hyundai needs to stick to that. Now you can order this thing with an all black interior if you want, but here are my complaints about that. First and foremost, it doesn't feel as bright and airy in here. And the other thing is it takes some of the character away. With all the gray and tan, it really does spruce this up and it makes it stand out. Not too many small cars like this have this much character inside, so I like the fact it has that, but there are just those weird little hangups in here. Now, just like last time, if you do want a bit of sporty performance in your Elantra sedan, you can order it with a turbocharged engine. It's called the N-Line this time around, and I haven't driven it yet, but I do have high hopes for it based on all the other vehicles I've driven that are powered by that 1.6 liter engine, as well as how buttoned down this platform is. It is new for this generation, and I can't get over how well balanced it is. And there is a torsion beam rear suspension, which tend to be a little less comfortable than multi-link setups, but I could swear that this is an independent rear suspension. It is that good. It is like Reebok pump perfect in here. And there's a nice firmness with just a little bit of cushioning to help soften blows out here on the road. And I have to say that this is one of the smoothest and most comfortable cars in this class. And it's nice and quiet too. I will say that the steering does feel a little overboosted at times, but there's a nice weight and resistance to it, and you do have a nice sense of control with your hands on the wheel. And then there's the powertrain. Now, because of that turbo version, I wasn't really expecting much here. There's a two liter four cylinder under the hood that makes 147 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque. And that's paired to a continuously variable transmission that sends power to the front wheels. But I have to say, I'm very impressed with how it all comes together. Don't let those specs fool you. Throttle response is fantastic and it's just really peppy. I was surprised at how nice it is to drive and it feels a lot more powerful than it is. The other thing is the CVT does a great job of fooling you into thinking it is a conventional automatic. It's only when you really get your foot into the gas that it starts to get loud and buzzy. And there are some shift points programmed in that also make it feel like a regular automatic. There's also some different drive modes you can run through down here on the console. 
Sport mode sharpens up the throttle response. Normal is self-explanatory. And then there's a smart mode that's like the perfect blend of an eco mode, but it keeps things nice and responsive. So if you're easy on the gas, it does make it nice and muted. But as soon as you get on that skinny pedal, it's ready to deliver at a moment's notice. Again, this thing isn't a sport compact car, but for what it is and for the amount of output this engine makes, I am very impressed with it. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with how it does at the pumps too. Now it's rated at 6.7 liters per 100 kilometers combined, which is pretty average for the segment, but I've been a lot closer to the highway rating all week. And now consider this, this thing is riding on winter tires. It is bitterly cold and we keep getting hammered with snow. The fact that I'm burning just a little bit more than six liters per 100 kilometers this week is a testament to just how efficient this powertrain is in that smart mode. Now, like I said earlier, if you want this one I'm driving, it is the ultimate trim with the tech pack and it's about 30 grand before tax. If you skip that add on, you're gonna pay about 27.8 for this thing and you still get good stuff like leather upholstery, adaptive cruise control and an eight speaker stereo. If you drop down to the preferred trim, well, that's 24 seven and there's still good stuff like a heated steering wheel, push button start and blind spot monitoring. And then there's the base trim. It actually does have some good stuff. You get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, an eight inch touchscreen and heated front seats. And that's 19.7 before tax. If you want the CVT, it's gonna cost you 1900 bucks more, but you are getting more than just the transmission and it adds some advanced safety features like lane keep assist, as well as forward emergency braking and automatic high beams. To recap, I like the new Elantra styling, the way it drives, and that it hits with some impressive features for the money. I don't like that the door pockets are so small that adaptive cruise control only comes in the top trim or the driver focused cabin design. If there's one thing about this new Elantra, it's that it delivers tons of choice. And I think that's pretty key for a car like this. It doesn't matter what your budget is, it's gonna feel like you're getting a lot for the money. Now I do wish adaptive cruise control came in more trims instead of just this top one, but Hyundai's done a fantastic job here and it feels drastically improved in every way imaginable. Yes, there is a new Honda Civic on its way shortly, but at least for the time being, this is the new best in class.